This morning, as I was watching Fox News and saw the aerial coverage of uh, our border crises, and I saw these uh, immigrants, migrants coming over uh, from Mexico, uh, just going around the, a border wall without anybody trying to stop them and surrendering to the uh, uh, border patrol. And from the aerial view, they were, it was in black and white. It, it looked like they were ants. They looked like they were insects uh, coming into our country. And as I uh, pondered that, I got to considering in the book of Joel. Uh, Joel talks about an, a locust invasion coming upon Israel and Judah in his day. And I wanted to read to you about that. And I think we can see some parallels to what is happening in our beloved country today. The word of the Lord came to Joel. Hear this, you old man, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it. And let your children tell their children and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, the locust hath eaten. So first there was the invasion of the palmer word, worm. And uh, they ate up much of the land and then uh, what they had left, the, the locust came and, and ate. And that which the locust had left, the canker worm hath eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. So four different species of insects here coming up and devouring uh, the land of Israel. And it was a crisis. Of course, everyone recognizes that there's a crisis at the border now. Even the Democrats and liberals and the media uh, are admitting there's a crisis um, at the border where hundreds of thousands of people are coming up from Mexico, Guatemala, uh, Honduras, and, and Africa and invading our country. And of course, it was Donald Trump who sounded the call and warned us of the crises. And it's, it's taken months, even years, for some to come around and understand uh, this is a great crisis coming against the United States of America. And I think we might uh, think of that as uh, recent American history. In the 60s, uh, you had um, the, the, the hippies and the and the flower children. And uh, they brought the sex, the booze, the drugs, the rock and roll, depraved, decadent music uh, in, into our country. The Beatles, uh, they, they named themselves other insects. And uh, they came and devoured America's uh, youth, corrupted America's youth with their, with their drugs and advocacy of promiscuous sex. Well, what they had left behind in, in the 70s that was uh, uh, followed up by the, well, the feminist. And the feminist did so much to destroy the family and ruin American women, uh, turn them into dissatisfied uh, rebels who don't even want to, in many cases, uh, uh, have children anymore or get married anymore. And that was a, a great blow uh, uh, to the country. And they devoured so much that the uh, uh, palmer worm, the hippies, the uh, yippies of the 60s had left. And then that was followed up by the, uh, uh, the locust. The first you had the palm worm, then the locust, then the canker worm and... Um, they would represent, uh, well, your alphabet people uh, coming in. The uh, 
uh, lettered people coming in and uh, uh, they're uh, now devouring America, uh, destroying the marriage, redefining what the institution of marriage means, uh, uh, destroying the family, uh, corrupting America with their diseases and, 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 and lifestyle, so-called lifestyle. Um, and finally then the caterpillar, what was left, the caterpillar of Eden, you got the Muslim invasion of the United States. They uh, are not assimilating into our culture. Uh, they want to establish Sharia law in America, have no respect for our institutions, no respect for the American heritage and, and our history. Our land is being devoured by, by these uh, insects, uh, uh, these, these type people law, who, who are godless people. Says in verse 5, Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl, ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. And so it's time America wakes up. It's time the drunkards wake, wake up. Of course, I was a part of the hippie generation in the 60s the, and, and the drugs, and I was a drunkard, finally got converted in uh, 1972 and got on the Lord's side and began to. Uh, sound the trump of warn people of what was coming upon America. And God sent me to the college and university campus to do that. Generally mocked, ridiculed, and nevertheless, we get a few converts uh, uh, here and there. Uh, also, these uh, different species of insects uh, uh, describe uh, the current invasion of our country, uh, the, the palma worm, the Mexicans, uh, the locusts would be uh, say the Guatemalans, the canker worm, the, those coming up from Honduras, the um, caterpillar would be uh, now the Africans coming in. Everyone come, wants to come to America. I really can't say I blame them. This is the land of opportunity. And Native Americans, and by that I don't mean the Indians who were uh, here before the Europeans came over, but the uh, Native Americans, people who have been born here, have no appreciation for our freedom. Uh, they are not, tend not often to be industrious people. Uh, they, they don't want to work. At least a lot of these people coming in this country uh, are willing to work and, and uh, make a living for themselves and make a success out of themselves. So what should we do about all this? Well, Joel says in verse 13, gird yourselves and, and lament, ye priests. Howl, ye ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land and in the house of the Lord your God, and cry out unto the Lord. It's time the pastors uh, uh, gather the people and uh, call a solemn fast and, and uh, prayer meetings and that we might intercede for our country and, and uh, preach sanctification again, preach holiness again, separation from sin, separation from the world, uh, separation from the devil. So this is the answer. We need to cry out unto a God. And of course, many are calling for uh, prayer like uh, uh, Franklin Graham, uh, son of uh, Billy Graham, and others are taking the lead in this and calling America to pray. And we need to intercede for our country. Then it says in chapter two, Joel, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Blow the trumpet in Zion. God has raised up a trumpet in America. Our beloved president, Donald J. Trump, uh, he's sounding the alarm. He's uh, call, uh, calling uh, uh, our border crisis uh, a crisis. And he's come up with various reasonable and intelligent me uh, means of stopping this. And either the courts or Congress uh, uh, stops him in every effort he's done. And the liberals just don't have any respect for borders. 
But God has made the borders of the nations. He's given us borders, moral borders. It's called the moral law of God. And we've been transgressing the moral law of God uh, since the 60s in a, in a greater and greater and greater way uh, uh, each decade that passes. Verse 12 of chapter 2 of Joel. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Sound the trumpet. We sound the trumpet. I'm sounding the trumpet daily on college and university campuses calling people to repentance. Turn you. Turn ye even to me with all your heart. The heart would symbolize the will. We need to completely surrender our will to God's will. Turn from a self-centered to a God-centered life. Have a change of ultimate intention, a change of mind, and a true change of mind will produce a change of behavior. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger, and of great kindness. And he will repent of the evil he intends to do to us. I think this locust invasion is God's judgment. But he'll repent of it. He'll change his mind. If we'll change our mind and turn back to him and give glory to him and turn from our selfish ways and uh, serve the Lord God in, in holiness and righteousness and in o, o, uh, and a life of obedience. He's ever forgiving. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse all, us from all unrighteousness. I think God still favors America. His favor is still upon this land. But we, we need to turn back to him Take a hold of the hand of God. Take a hold of the elders. Verse 4, who knoweth if he will return and repent? Who knows what God will do? We know he's gracious. We know he's kind. We know he's merciful. We know that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Who knoweth if he will return and repent? and leave a blessing behind him. Yes, God wants to bless us. He doesn't want to curse us. God's a God of blessings. But if we continue in our rebellion, if God's going to be just, he will bring the curse of the locust upon us, which he's been doing since the 60s. And leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. So pastors, I urge you, call your people together. Let's intercede for America. Pray for the president of the United States. Uh, think, our, our, our leader who's got a vision for America to make America great again. Joel had a vision to make Israel great again. To make Judah great again. But alas, they failed to ultimately hear the call uh, that uh, uh, Joel had for the people of Israel. And God brought uh, the Babylonians uh, 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 against uh, Judah and Israel. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, we need to gather our children together. We've had two of the grandchildren visiting us uh, this week. And each evening we gather them together, open up the Bible, teach them the Bible. We've been teaching them this week about the devil and, and the devil's ways and how we have power over the devil. We can conquer the... Uh, chapter uh, 2, verse uh, 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent amongst you. So he sent the army of these locusts amongst them to devour them. 
But now we know God will change his mind. And uh, he'll send us blessings. He'll send us deliverance if we're, if we're determined to go his way. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. The praise to the name of the Lord your God. God wants to bless us. Christ has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. The devil cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ has come that we might have this more abundant life. Uh, the life of prosperity, the life of good health and wealth and the blessings of God. You shall eat of the plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. The Bible says, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my word in the midst of this adulterous and perverse generation, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his angels. We can't be ashamed of the gospel. Let's declare the gospel in the midst of this adulterous and perverse generation. They have these gay pride parades in, in uh, June. Uh, the alphabet people come out in masses. I see uh, in Boston they're coming for a they're, they're calling for a, a, a straight pride parade. We straight people, we godly people, we people that are obeying God need to take a stand. We need to go out in the streets. We need to take uh, the Bible to the streets, the word of God to the streets and call the people to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 28 of chapter two. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream dreams. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days I will pour out of my spirit. Of course, Peter on the day of Pentecost quoted from the book of Joel. God is still pouring out his spirit. We need to receive the spirit of God. We need to receive the fullness of the Holy Ghost. And God has given us the Holy Ghost so we can have power. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and on to the uttermost part of the earth. That's what we are. Rising up against evil. Sounding the trumpet in Zion, calling the nation to repentance, calling the God's people to gather together in their churches and pray and fast and seek the Lord with their whole heart. The handmaidens, you handmaidens can be active in this. The women that God is raising up that are going out into the streets and preaching. Then finally in verse 32, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Call upon the name of Jesus and he'll deliver us personally. He'll deliver our nation. He'll set us free from these locusts, the locust invasion. And America can prosper again. America can become great again. It's up to us. We need to be determined to have revival in the land. And Joel has told us how we can have revival in the midst of this invasion of the locusts. Thank you for joining me this morning. Father, we just pray that you'll move upon your people, that they will rise up, that they will gather together Lord, we pray for the pastors, Lord, that they'll exercise uh, leadership and call their people to a solemn assembly. It's time to get serious. It's time to get solemn. We're to sing and we're to dance and we're to express the joy of the Lord. But Jesus said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's, uh, it's, it's a time of mourning and weeping for our country. 
that we might know again the, the joy of the Lord, the joy of obedience to God, the joy of having a relationship with God, the joy of walking in the Spirit, uh, the joy of drinking the new wine. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, where is an excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This is the joyous life. It's not in sexual promiscuity. It's in self-denial and being filled with the Holy Ghost that comes the true joy, the true peace. And we can uh, uh, drink this drink offering that he offers us, the new wine. God bless you. Thank you for joining me this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.